I'm going to go do my leftovers. And I was like, I'm at school. I can't do that. Did you have some leftovers waiting on you or something? At home, yes, I did. Yeah, at home. Didn't you say you got, like, a couple siblings? They're not worried about taking your food out of the fridge? Right now. Huh? I get home for it. Oh. My brother gets home at 3. My sister, if it was Tuesday, she was off for school. So you were going to get to it before they got home. I don't have siblings, but that's how it was when you had roommates. All right, my name is. Uh, that doesn't always stop everybody. Even in the teacher's lounge, like sometimes people will take other people's food. <laughs> it's Eating that for breakfast? That would make Better me feel than
keep on forgetting we don't have school tomorrow. How can you forget that? I just keep, I was like thinking about it yesterday. I was like, okay, one more day. And I was like, hmm, is it eight? Isn't there three weeks? I'm like, we don't have school. So. Yeah, I actually did that yesterday. I was thinking it should be an A week. And then I realized that uh, we hadn't even decided what we were doing in the next A day yet. Like, I'm going to have to figure that out tomorrow. But then I realized well, there's no school Friday. Last break before summer break, I guess. Well, that's... That's the day before the last day. And actually, the very, very, very last day is like a makeup's final day. So if you don't miss any other finals, you won't have to come to school. Memorial Day anyway. What? Okay, y'all should have picked up two handouts this morning. Together, those make up handout 108. I uh, feel like it's been quite a while here since I've seen you guys. So what we have done in this unit, this is a small mini unit. We spent one day on linear piecewise stuff. So slope formula, point slope form, slope intercept form, writing piecewise functions, reading piecewise functions, uh, making piecewise functions from absolute values, all that kind of stuff. Day two was on quadratics, but specifically solving. So we talked about the different ways to solve and then focused most of our energy on quadratic formula since that's the only way that works 100% of the time. And then the last time I saw you guys, we focused on some quadratic sol uh, graphing stuff. So vertex, x-intercepts, y-intercept, what the graph looks like, knowing if it opens up or down, vertex form, factored form, all of that kind of stuff. So those three days of review, even though it was new for our class, it shouldn't be new to you, is what makes up this unit's test. So our test is set to be next class, which will be next Tuesday. So today is your time to review. So uh, part of what I need to, you to do is I need you to work through the review so you can see what is clicking and what you need some assistance on. Um, the test is pretty similar to the review, so anything that you think is difficult on the review is certainly something that you want to get cleared up today. But I believe I also promised a chance to ask one or two more book questions from 107. That was the last time I saw you guys, um, only because you may have finished that up at the end of class and not had time to ask your questions that you need to ask. So, before you get uh, started on the review, please make sure that you have 107 completed. If there's any of the questions at the end of the assignments you still needed some help with, go ahead and ask them right now. And then if you don't have any questions from that, you can start on the review. And as usual, I'll chime in and give you guys chances to speak up and get some reteaching from um, the review opportunity. I will ask for both of these before we test next Tuesday. Both of these are opened up in Google Classroom, so you are encouraged to go ahead and just turn in 107 and 108 when you have them finished. That way you don't run the risk of losing them or whatever. So does anyone know of any book questions they needed help with to finish up 107? Okay, then I will ask for some questions from the first page of the review here in about 10 or 15 minutes. So make sure that you have tried as many of those as you can within that time period. <coughs> um, also, we will allow a calculator on our test, but uh, it's really only for checking answers. So like if question one said, find the x-intercepts of the quadratic, and you use your calculator and give a couple decimal answers, 
that's not going to be worth any points on the test. But you could factor it by hand and solve. You could do quadratic formula by hand and solve. And then hopefully you will consider graphing it and then using the graph as a check or having your calculator store the answers and see that they work. So just something to keep in mind as you guys are looking through the review. Okay, I'll get out of your way for a few minutes so that you can try a few. on these equations of these lines. You have to find this oh. equation. So like for the last one, like right here, mm -hmm. I just like, I don't know how to find it. Well, the slope, you can find it with rise over run. Mm -hmm. It's just one. Well, one would be going up. Negative. Negative one. So what you could do is you could backtrack negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, negative one, to try to find where the winder step would be. Okay. And you could do that. Okay. Uh, I'm not crazy about that. So what I would normally do is write an equation of the line, like plug in 16, zero into it, and um, then solve it for y equals. So that's okay. in mx plus b, and then okay. you can find it algebraically. That and then way. I saw this on, this is like the correct answer on the review, but I don't know how you got that for like making it continuous. Oh, okay. So you see this little piece between 0 mm -hmm. and 6? 
head length. If this slope was a little bit taller, it would go up to here, and then all of this would connect. Mm -hmm. And what that slope would have to be would be. Oh, okay. So okay. That's all. And I'm then saying. what? It, this is just like changing right here. Well, like it's supposed to only exist between zero and six. That little piece is only supposed to exist. Okay. Anymore, so you need that piece. Okay. Thank you.
hopefully you're close to finished with the front page here. So it looks like the first page had some questions about slope intercept form from a couple points. Knowing horizontal lines have a slope of zero. Knowing parallel lines have the same slope. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Knowing what direct variation means. Graphing a piecewise function and knowing what a piecewise function is called. And I think that was it for page one. So questions one, two, or three, any parts of those that would be helpful to go back over? One C? Okay. Okay, so we're supposed to come up with a line parallel to this one that goes through this point. Um, now, on our test, sometimes we will ask for slope intercept. I'm just going to do both. And again, remember standard form can mean different things to different people, so we would be clear on the test. <coughs> slope intercept, and then sometimes we will ask for point slope. You have to know those two. So point slope is the one that I favor, because if you have a point, you're halfway done. You do y minus the y value equals the slope times x minus the x value. So really the only thing keeping me from having point and slope form is knowing the slope. Well, to be parallel to this line, he needs the same slope as this line. And if it's written in an unusual form like this, this is what we would call general form, and you don't have to know general form. But you can't just look at this and see the slope. That's why we like point slope and slope intercept, because these two you can just look at and see the slope. So this one, you should try to solve for y, subtract the 3x over, divide everything by negative 4 and then once he is in mx plus b format I can see that his slope is 3 fourths and because this one's parallel I should be keeping the same slope so that's how I know I need a slope of 3 fourths now if the question said okay but your answer has to be in slope intercept which doesn't happen a lot on the test but it does happen some start in point slope be familiar with point slope and then all you have to do is distribute that slope and then undo this add or subtract here so in this case undo add 3 so if you wanted slope intercept it should look like that and if you wanted point slope it should look like this same equation though Now, I kind of mentioned using a calculator to check some of your work. So, I don't think I need to check this one, but what would be a good idea if this was a test question and I was finished with others, is I could graph these two. Now, to graph in your calculator, you would have to at least subtract this three over. But you could graph these two, see that they're really the same line, just in different forms. It would be a problem if they look like different lines. And you could at least make sure that it was going through negative four, negative three. If this line doesn't go through negative 4, negative 3, and or this one doesn't go through negative 4, negative 3, then you would know you had a mistake and you'd want to try, retry the question before you turned your test in. Okay, anything more specific about that? Okay, others from page 1 you'd like to discuss? Can you show the 3? I was just confused on how you like drew the dots where x was at four. So uh, when x was at four. Yeah, because uh, the second to last one, it it's a closed one, but then the next one's open. I think it was like this. Um, so Okay, so I tried to color coordinate this a little bit, but if it if it's x can equal that, that's when it's a closed circle. So I did a closed circle there. Um, if it does not equal, that would be an open circle. But technically, if you already hit in this point, you know graphs aren't usually like different color segments. I was just trying to help you see. So 
the end of the day, this just needs to be a filled in circle because you've included that point here. Over here, x has to be equal to two. So this would be here. So filled in circle because of that equal sign. This says x can be greater than two, but not equal to two. So that's why this was an open circle. So I make sure I'm showing I'm not including that. And then at four, again, at the end of the day, all that matters is you're hitting this point. I'm not expecting you to get out like different colors okay. for your graph, but I'm including this point because of this. So, I mean, I don't know. I guess at first it was because of the gray line. And then I'm not including it because of this, but since it was already hitting that anyway, I mean, it's still a point on the graph, so. Yeah. So the, the color of the dots mean nothing. You need this to be filled in because we included it here. You need this filled in because we included it here. You need this not to be filled in because it didn't include it there. And you need this to be filled in because we included that one there. But for three, you're okay with the, the line pieces? Yeah, okay. I was just confused about that one point. Okay. All right, let me give you guys another 10 minutes and try to get through page two, please.
So I gave you 12 minutes there. So any standouts from page two? Four. four. All right, identify the slope and both intercepts of this function without changing to slope intercept form. Now, on the test, we're not going to be that specific. You can, pretty much any way you can come up with the answer is fine. Uh, but I'll show you what they were aiming for here. I think I had mentioned that this is referred to as general form. And the reason why it's kind of old-fashioned is point slope is great because you should instantly know a point on the graph and the slope. Slope intercept is great because you should instantly know the y-intercept and the slope. <coughs> but general form, I don't know what used to be kind of a thing with it is the intercepts the x and y intercepts because y intercepts always have an x value of zero and x intercepts always have a y value of zero and if it's written this way it makes it where i guess it's kind of easier to solve for those two things i mean i don't know you need to be able to manipulate this and work with it more anyway so that's why it's kind of not important anymore but if I plugged in 0 for x, I would be left with this, and I can solve that in my head. And if I plugged in 0 for y, I would be left with this, which I can solve in my head. So that's why this form, which used to be, <coughs> or it's not used to be, it is called general form. The reason why that used to be popular is it's fairly easy to find x and y intercepts. Now, since I have those, I could count rise 
over run to get the slope. And that's what it asks for. But again, you don't have to stress about the without changing it to slope intercept. If you prefer to change it to slope intercept on the test, that is fine too. Okay, others on page two? Yep. Right, um, on four, if mm -hmm. you solve from general to y equals mx plus b, uh -huh. won't that give you a positive slope or no? Uh, well, you'd have to subtract the 5x over, oh, okay. and that's what's going to make it yeah. a negative slope. I don't know if I'm pushing you a little too fast on that one, but let me reset our timer. Do what you can to try to be done with page three, or at least look at the questions so you know which ones you might want to ask about. And then once I take your questions from page three, if you still had something from page one or page two, then I'll give you a chance to speak up on those again. Did anybody do ACT last weekend? Go okay? How was the math? It was just a lot of math that like I learned a long time ago. Or like was like math you learned a long time ago? Yeah. Or like algebra two stuff we didn't really go over. Well that doesn't sound the best. <laughs> you don't sound very confident. I mean I like for the most part, like I I feel like you already told me that. I'm I having deja vu. Okay. Tuesday? Never like the human Oh, that's right. Because the Kepi girl did come in zero hour. That's right. That's what it was. <coughs> Some of it is just luck of what you see.
of question seven or question eight. Stuff that makes up page three. Okay, any questions from page one or two that I moved on too quickly from? Seven. Okay, what well, part of seven? Finding the vertex. Um, well, you can do that two different ways. Either you can find the x value by doing negative b over 2a. So for this question, that would be negative negative 6 over 2 times 1 or 3. And then for the y value, you have to plug that x value into the function and solve for y, just like you do for all points. So that should be negative 2, I believe. So that's what I would do to find uh, the vertex. But if you're also going to find x-intercepts, Now it says she'll work with quadratic formula, but just to be quick here, I'm going to do it with factoring, if it'll factor. Um, actually, it doesn't factor, so never mind. That's the only way you could get the vertex on this one. usually so sometimes what happens is like if you have an x-intercept of like 1 and 5 your vertex has to be in the middle so if those were your these are not the x-intercepts but if these were the x-intercepts the vertex has to be in the middle so that would be a second way to find the vertex but for this one the, the x-intercepts are some kind of decimal so unless you find those with quadratic formula change them to a decimal plot them on the x-axis and then find the average of those two things that's just not going to happen. So pretty much you have to do it this way on this question. But with the calculator, you could also check it, graph it, and make sure that it looked OK. All right, you guys, we have about 30 more minutes. And I know you got at least the back page to look at. So go ahead and keep on going here. And I'll try to give you one more good chance to speak up. I'll try to give you a little bit longer on this one. So this test is really not meant to be difficult or anything, but if there's anything on this review that you either don't remember, didn't learn in Algebra 2, and still didn't pick up when we went over it in class, you need to make sure that you prioritize that between now and next Tuesday. Because everything on the review will show up on the test.
Questions from the last page. Solving some quadratics. Knowing what imaginary zeros are going to look like on the graph. Okay, anything from one of the previous pages? still have 15 minutes so if you find something then please go ahead and ask um, with your long weekend it's a little bit harder to remember about your test on Tuesday so if you don't have a reminder set somehow I would consider doing that now also a reminder I will pick up 107 which was book work and this review with 108 um, before we start the test so Especially if you have both those finished in class today, you might as well turn those into Google Classroom. But since our test on this mini unit will be Tuesday, if you have any missing work or late work that you want more points for, then you need to make sure that you have that ready to turn in also. Okay. So just let me know if you all find anything else. <coughs> 